We're back. It's time for yet another Derby High School broadcast. We're your hosts, Tyler Davenport. And I'm Jahan Kennedy. And do we have a great episode this week. Our first video is about Native Americans and their historic powwow. Let's check it out. The Mid-American All Indian Center holds many classes and exhibits for the general public, but the most popular meetings are the powwow. Native vendors are welcome to sell merchandise at the powwow, and many special treats are often seen thanks to these vendors. The true spotlight of the powwow, however, is not the vendors, but the dancers and singers. In going to the next powwow, it will take place November 11th. Next up is a montage by Caitlin Sanders. police officer's daily life is like, well, Caitlin and Noel will enlighten us. Let's see it. It helps to document uh, the accountability in video and audio so that it can, can help the officers maybe get retrained if needed and also to show uh, citizens interactions with officers. The city of Wichita gave a certain amount of funds and then it's up to the police department now to continue those funds. Okay, so as far as the camera equipment goes, we have a battery pack that wear. Uh, some officers wear them on the vest like I have mine here. Some officers wear them on their belt. When you double tap this, it gives you an audible beat and it starts a video recording 30 seconds prior to the button being activated. Also supplied with our camera equipment is a small, uh, what looks like a cell phone, actually is a cell phone. It's a Motorola player device and what this is is a Bluetooth from the camera to the, to the phone. Uh, we can use these uh, tapes making sure that we type accurate and thorough reports. Uh, we can also use them to review for uh, court testimony when we testify in a court case. And then we can also use them to identify witnesses, suspects, or uh, victims in any cases that we go to. Time for Sports. Sports. By Brett Jones. That's right, it's Sports Segment. My name is Brett Jones. Let's hit it. Starting off, let's talk about some awesome cross country. Our cross country dominated at the Southeast Invitational. Both the girls and boys teams placed first overall in their divisions. Way to go on that. On the girls' side, Ashlyn Strobel placed first. Mara Frankie placed fourth. And Jackie Baker placed sixth. That is awesome. On the boys' side, Jonathan Jones placed first. 
and both Braden Uncle and Aiden Gilmore placed in the top 10. Way to go to all those top 10 finishers. That is amazing. Hey, shout out to volleyball. They had a pretty good week. They beat up a top 10 maze team at home and finished a solid three and three at the maze tournament on Saturday. Now, Finally, we have some football. That's right. We had a great win on Friday, beating Mays 60 to 28, where we put up a school record breaking 676 yards of offense. Oh, yeah, we got some highlights from that game, so let's do it. The next one on our list this week is about a park full of art by Karsten Runyon. The Art Park. Kate Pepper and her husband Charles Bauman founded the Art Park in 2007. They had been in the business only three years with the Monarch School of Art. They knew they wanted to have their own campus for people to show up and enjoy their time there. From the beginning of opening, their business was in a strip mall. Safety was a concern of theirs, being in a busy strip mall, but they also wanted other similar businesses for convenience for families. They relocated for the safety of others since it was in a busy strip mall. They currently have 10 businesses at the campus and hopefully one more relocating at the first of the year. All sorts of instruments are outside of the art park on display to catch the eye of people. I'm sure you've heard of the movie It, and Parker Pimmon was able to give us a review on it. Hey Panthers, what's going on? My name is Parker, and today I'm going to be reviewing It. Stephen King's It is the newest movie to hit theaters this summer. It features Bill Skarsgård as the infamous Pennywise the Clown, a clown that feeds off the fear of people living in Derry, Maine in 1989. In my opinion, this movie is a definite step up from the original miniseries from 1990. Aren't you going to say hello? In It, the story focuses on the group of outcasts in the town of Derry, Maine, who are self-named the Losers Club who are confronted by an entity named Pennywise, whose facade is a clown. Pennywise the Dancer. 
Bill Skarsgård did an amazing job playing as this killer clown, in my opinion, being probably the best iteration of Pennywise ever. As for the kids, uh, also did a great job, but in my opinion, some of the characters were underdeveloped, like Mike and Stan. They were introduced in the beginning, but you kind of quickly forget about them. The most notable member of the Losers Club, which is probably my favorite, is uh, has to go to Richie, played by Finn Wolfhard. You may recognize him as Mike from Stranger Things. He easily carried this movie at some parts, and he definitely has some amazing lines that I do not want to spoil here. It kind of also struggles from feeling like it was really short at its two-hour... Uh, runtime. It could have definitely been fitted from being about three hours long, but due to a smaller budget, uh, that just was not possible. But in the end, I have to give it a solid 8 out of 10. It's a great movie and you need to see it if you're 17 or over. Next up is a little insight about Color Guard by Joey Buffington. My name is Stormy and I'm on the DHS Color Guard. My name is Cora Belisle and I am in the DHS Color Guard team. My name is Abigail and I'm on the DHS Color Guard. Hi, I'm Emily Allenball. I'm a member of the DHS Color Guard. I'm Danny Conaway and I'm on Color Guard. Hi, I am Marissa Lillian and I'm on the DHS Color Guard. I'm Julie Martin. I'm one of the captains for the DHS Panther Color Guard. I'm Ashley Henwood. I am one of the co-captains for Color Guard here at Derby High School. Hi, my name is Amanda Ice and I am the Color Guard coach here at Derby High School. Color Guard is the visual interpretation of the music that the marching band plays. We spend a lot of time working with different kinds of equipment like flags, weapons, various silks of all sorts and colors to interpret the music with dance and visual elements such as facial expressions, body control, and equipment in general. Color Guard is especially fun because we have such a great team mentality and it's a very unique type of athleticism in the school. It incorporates a lot of art into it and it's very different from what you'd normally expect. It takes a lot of effort to do a lot of what we're doing and a lot of um, dedication. My favorite part about it is competition season. It's just loving and it's a great atmosphere and I've made some of my greatest friends in Guard. So, If you're interested in joining Color Guard, we have a winter program that we're starting in November. Auditions will be the first week of November sometime. And if you're interested, you can email me. What is K-Club? Alicia Bishop has the answer for us. I'm Mrs. Coffee, and I teach English 9 and English 11, and I am one of the co-sponsors for K-Club. And I am Mrs. McKay, and I teach English 9, 10, and 11, and am one of the co-sponsors for K-Club. K-Club is a student-led community service organization. Um, K stands for the Kansas Association for Youth and we really focus on doing community service projects throughout our community, throughout our school, building character, building leadership skills, and those things. So far, we have obviously got Hollyball going for us, and um, we are going to do some sort of activity at the zoo, and then um, actually already this year, we decorated rocks around the community. If you find them, hashtag them, DHSK Club. <laughs> Take a picture. <laughs> and then um, we wrote appreciation notes to teachers. And so each month we're going to be doing something a little bit different and our students get to decide what those projects are going to be. There are a lot of benefits to joining K-Club. Um, the really cool thing about K-Club is that it's kind of a home or a place for everybody to feel comfortable and feel welcome and just get together with the student body to better our community. Um, in K-Club, it doesn't matter if you are a freshman, if you're a senior, what your GPA is, if you are good at athletics or singing or art, you are just welcome. Um, and the benefits of being in K-Club is that you really learn to um, get together with the student body for the bigger picture. So you are making your community and your school better and you are learning character building skills and leadership skills throughout. Um, and it's been really cool for Mrs. McKay and I to watch students from different grade levels, different walks of life come together and get to know each other and build some friendships. So in the future we really hope to grow the club and get more kids involved and build more leaders in our building. And that's Dallas. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, it's that time again. It seems like they get shorter and shorter every week. Thanks for tuning in. Follow us on Snapchat on my shoulder. And Twitter on my shoulder. See, See you on, on the, the next, next one. one.